Okay, this is kind of an intermediate case in our quest to generalize the definition of work. And in this case, I'm still constraining myself to one dimension, but I'm allowing the applied force to be variable. So it might change in magnitude or direction, and I'm trying to come up with an expression for the work. So what I'm going to do is mark down where my object is at this instant. And in the next small change in time, I'm going to have a little displacement pointing to the right. That would be a dx vector. And I'm going to write down a work increment that's been done during this infin infinitesimal amount of time. And that would be given by the dot product of the force vector and the displacement vector. And so the total work would be the sum of all those increments. And you would add up all of the contributions to the work from the starting position to the finishing position, f of x dotted into dx. Now you might be concerned seeing that there's a dot product inside of an integral, but I'll make it clear with the next example that often that's not going to cause any complications. So there's our somewhat generalized formula for the work. So here's a quick example of how we apply this new formula. Um, so I have a variable force this time. It's varying in magnitude because there's an x in the expression for force. That means the bigger x gets, the bigger the force gets. Notice the units on the coefficient here are newtons per meter because the units of x are meters. The meters cancel and I'm left with newtons. My initial position is zero. My final position is 2.5 meters. So I want to look at some general location along this path that I call x. And at that point, f is equal to this value, 0.3 newtons per meter times x. And I'm going to have a little displacement to the right that gives me a little contribution to work. The little displacement is called dx. So let's write down our work integral. All right, the integral of f of x dotted into dx. Well, I can see that f of x points in exactly the same direction as dx. So the cosine theta from the dot product drops out because theta is equal to zero. So I end up with just integral as, as we go from x1 to x2. f of x, that's 0.3x times dx. So there is no vector inside the integral anymore. The dot product is the magnitude of the first times the magnitude of the second. That's what I see down here, times the cosine of the angle between them, but that was just one. So I'm ready to integrate now, and I probably should have written um, the actual numbers on these limits, so I'll just put them in like this. And when I integrate x, I get 1 half x squared. So I have 0.3 times 1 half x squared evaluated from 0 to 2.5. And when I plug in that lower limit, I'm going to get 0. So the upper limit is the only one that counts. And I have 0.3 times 1 half times 2 and a half squared. And I'll run the numbers real quick. And I end up with 0.938, if I keep three sig figs, 0.938 joules.